Jane McDonald. Did someone mention Cruise? I caught the cruising bug more than 20 years ago when I was working as a singer on a ship. See, when I were on the ships, I had no window. I used to have to put the television on to see what type of day it was. It's not just us Brits who are crazy about cruising. Last year, 25.8 million holidaymakers worldwide choose to cruise. There's a cruise for everyone. There's quiet cruisers, there's party cruisers, there's island cruisers, there's river cruisers. And I'm just going to carry on cruising till I've found you, your perfect cruise. Try stopping me. There's a cocktail bar over there. <laughs> I'm calling this my Eurovision cruise. Five countries in seven days, Italy, Malta, Spain, France, and back to Italy. And that's five if I'm counting. I'm so lucky to have this job. This time I'm cruising on the latest addition to the MSC fleet, the Meraviglia. In Malta, things start with a bang. Woo! <laughs> I'm overwhelmed in Barcelona. This has completely taken my breath away. Dance in the streets of Marseille. Stepped off the ship, did a musical. And if all that isn't enough, welcome to heaven on earth. Benvenuto in Italia. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah, we're here in Italy. I've just had a cup of coffee so strong that I'm not going to blink for the next ten minutes. Do you know that ship there holds more than 5,000 passengers? 5,000 passengers! It's... I don't know. <laughs> Massive! It's time to go party! Hasta la pasta, baby! My journey this time is a trip around the Western Mediterranean. This ship does a circuit every week and you can get on at any stop you fancy. I'm joining it in Sicily, then on to Valletta in Malta, Barcelona in Spain, Marseille in France, Genoa in Italy and finally Naples. Look at the size of that! It starts over here. And you can't even see where it finishes. <laughs> It's huge! Made with over 35,000 tonnes of steel, stretching nearly a third of a kilometre and 19 decks tall, and with 2,250 cabins, she really is a behemoth. And Meraviglia, it's time to get to know you. Oh, my... <laughs> it's like being in Las Vegas. This is not a ship. This is a mall. It's a, it's a chocolate restaurant. <laughs> There's even a pub. There's an English pub up there. The Brass Anchor. Oh, my goodness me. <gasps> Look at this. <laughs> it's everything you want on here. It's sparkle, glamour, crystals, grand pianos, new. It's very high tech. This will be your cruise car, Mrs. McDonald. Thank you very much. This will be your wristband. And it will be on deck 14. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I'm blown away by what I've seen already. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's not that way. It's this way. Look at that. Oh. Oh, this is really nice, isn't it? Look. Oh, voila. Oh. 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 I love a good bed. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is nice. Oh. I love this bit. I love finding my own little space on a cruise ship. Look at that view. It, on this vast, big ship, this is my little bit, and it's new, and the bed's comfy. <gasps> I've got a bath. I'm getting it, shall we? Well, you've been on my bed. You might as well get in my bath. Oh, wow. This is something you don't, you don't get. A bath in a normal-sized cabin with a balcony. This is wonderful. 
Hello. This ship's on a schedule, and no sooner have I got on than we're already underway to Valletta in Malta. Let's be honest, I'll spend more time getting lost on here than doing my job and showing you the ship. So I'm waiting to have a chat with Rob, one of the officers. Oh, look at that view. Goodbye, Italy. Farewell. And so what if I'm having a cocktail as well? Multitasking McDonald, that's me. This is something I never, ever will get fed up of, seeing the sunset and and the view that you get from the sea. I just love it. I'm drinking cocktails. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fantastic, thank you. Good. I'm enjoying oh, your I'm first day. It. I'm just having the best time. Yeah, it's I've had a cocktail now, the sun's out. Perfect sail away. Oh, it is? Yeah. Where are you from? Manchester. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How many bars are they actually on here? Uh, in total, it's 20 bars. 20? 20. 20 bars on the ship, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter which end of the ship you start, you can do a pub crawl from, from front to back, from top to bottom. There's, yeah. there's bars all over, yeah. This is yeah. my... This is the biggest thing I've ever been on. <laughs> and... Uh, leave it. And, uh, <laughs> and I must admit, I, I'm like... It, it's really high-tech for me, this, yeah. so... I'm so sorry, Robert, but I, those things with the... the Thing. I can't work it. <laughs> I'll show you, they're easy. Will you? Easy, yeah. What are you looking forward to now? I'm looking forward to every single bit of it. I'm looking forward to doing the pub crawl to 20 bars. I'm looking forward to beautiful sunsets like this every night. I'm looking forward to party party. And I'm looking forward to seeing Robert again. He's going to show me around a bit. A lot to do on here. So I don't think I'm going to be bored at all. I'm so lucky to have this job. Coming up, I reach new heights. And it's all going off. It's the second day of my Mediterranean cruise aboard the Meraviglia. We've sailed south from Sicily to the magical island of Malta and its capital, Valletta. It was absolutely beautiful sailing into Valletta this morning. It was like being in a scene from Game of Thrones. I actually felt I was Khaleesi, the Queen of Dragons. All that rugged look and any minute there should be a dragon coming over the cliff and landing in the swimming pool for a little drink. Um, one didn't, obviously, but it felt as if it could do, you know. Apparently, Malta's population is only 450,000, and that's just slightly bigger than Wakefield's. Oh, I feel right at home here. So I'm just going to find out now. Which one do I go into? That, that one for me? For me? Do I press that? No. Things to do. <laughs> Give me a slate and a piece of chalk and I'll be fine. Top things to see. Hang on a minute, should we do that? Welcome to Valletta, the capital of Malta. It was built in the second half of the 16th century by the French knight of Saint John, Jean de Valletta. The city has an important historical and artistic heritage with over 300 monuments. So I bet there's some nice walks here. Because of its strategic position close to Africa, Malta played a vital part in helping Britain win the Second World War. Under constant bombardment for two years, it held out against the Germans and the Italians. To recognize their heroism, the island was awarded the George Cross, which is now part of its flag. This is the thing about being on a ship. You're very tempted to just stay where you are because, one, you can't be bothered, two, you're quite comfortable, three, you're used to working to a routine every day and, and you're on your holidays, you can do what you like. So this is why you should really make an effort, because look at this. 
History is everywhere you look. There's buildings, monuments, churches and tradition. What's going on? I don't actually know what I'm looking at yet. <laughs> There's some guns down here. There's a man in uniform. There is a man in uniform lighting something down there. This ceremony dates back to 1800. Originally, the guns were fired three times a day and marked the opening and closing of the city gates and lunchtime. It's just once a day now, and you know, it's us tourists who keep traditions like this alive. See, Malta is very, very pro-British because of what happened in the war. And also, the Queen even lived here after she'd just got married, so she's got a very big connection with Malta. She said that living here was the only time she had a normal life. Malta is still part of the British Commonwealth, and there are reminders of home everywhere you look. Oh, there's actually a telephone box. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. It's actually working. I love a bit of tradition. It's Queen Victoria. Get out my pub. It is very British, isn't it? There's something quite reassuring about it, isn't it? Just like that's really nice. Got it? How, how do you like Malta, is it? Yes, good, yes. I got engaged in Malta 30 years ago. So it's a nostalgic trip for you? Yeah. Oh, that's it's from nice. Wales, anyway. No, I, I couldn't tell at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just off Africa, obviously. And then uh, there's loads of little English touches, but it looks Egyptian with all these colours. You're getting a little bit of everything, and it, it's really working well. I'd love to see more of Malta, but I've got to get back to the ship, as I've got something very special lined up. Let's go on, Jane. Got some access to Cirque du Soleil, which is massive all over the world, and they've got their own bespoke theatre, actually on MSC, and it's the only ship that has has that contract with Cirque du Soleil. Can you imagine if he came to clean me your windows? It'd be a right laugh watching him out your bedroom window, wouldn't it? Hello, I'm Jane. Hello. Thank you so much for letting me come nice and see you. you. So you're obviously one of the main performers in, in Cirque. Yes, I'm the female dancer of this cast. Yes. And Tim is the other dancer. Oh, 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 I say, Tim's... <laughs> but he tried to be an acrobat. <laughs> He's trying to be an acrobat. Can you show me something then? Please? Yeah, so this is from my first part of my life, okay. the rhythmic gymnastic. But yeah. then I start to move more in a dancing. Yeah way of life, and I use this. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm almost impressed. And stop it. You're so not, I can tell by your face. I was impressed. Were you? <laughs> Aren't you? Um, so this is a cheerleading team? Yeah, this is just their warm-up for the show. This is the warm-up? Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. Right. Oi! That's a warm up. Oi! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to do that, it's a no. Uh oh. Whoa! <laughs> You're gonna. Yeah? Ah. Yeah, oh. You're gonna do that with me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Give me one. Okay. Step. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Ah! Then what do I do? Ah! Labour! <laughs> oh, gentlemen! Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> it's probably the scariest thing I've done in an awful long time. <laughs> I'm actually shaking with that. <laughs> but thank you very much That's for that great. experience. That's something I will take to my grave. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. After that.
that, I really do need to go and have a lie down and calm down. But the party just continues everywhere on this ship. Night, night. See you in the morning. Now, where are my earplugs? Morning. Oh, I do feel better for a good night's sleep. From the letter, we're heading to Barcelona. We've got a whole day at sea. Fab. This is my chance to really check out the ship and show you what it's got. Look at that! Oh, hola! Woo! Ah, the lovely art! Everybody's so friendly! Lazing round the pool, grabbing a bite to eat, fun and games, this ship's got it all. There's even a water slide park. And no, there are some things I won't do. Come with me. I'm off to meet my mate, Rob. Hello. Hi, Jane. How, How are, are you? You're you OK? Good to I'll see you. Care. Yeah, you're taking me somewhere fabulous. I brought you to take yeah. Blackpool at Sea. Blackpool it's at Sea. It's got the virtual amusement park. <laughs> so right now, yeah. I'm going to put you on the roller coaster so you don't have to take control. Oh, my God, here we go. <laughs> have you been on one of these before? No. No. I would, the roller coaster is so realistic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God! <laughs> that is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> it was awful. You and me, you versus me. All right. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll tell you what, when I first came up here, I thought, ooh, I don't want to be up here. But it's the best time. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Take that, sucker! <laughs> it's just unbelievable! Is, is there anything normal without guns and throwing up? Take you to do something a little bit more... Uh... A bit more in my pace. A bit more in your pace, yeah. Good. Good. Oh, if I'm honest, I'm not really one for spontaneous dancing, but the whole atmosphere here is have fun, have a go, and it's infectious, so why not? This is a little bit of tranquility in this massive chaos of this ship. There's absolutely everything. Shops, kids' areas, theme parks. You could even meet the captain and have your photo taken. And it is so overwhelming. But there's 5,000 people on here that you've got to entertain. And that's why there is absolutely everything on here. I'm pleasantly tired. And, and that's what you want to feel on your holidays. You want to feel worn out so that when you get into that bed, it's the best thing in the world. And, and then you just wake up in the morning ready to go again. It's perfect. Have you just got on today? I have, yes. Oh, that's nice. Pleased to meet you. I'm Pleased Jane. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Hi. You're going to have a ball. <laughs> You're going to have the best time ever on here. That's the uniqueness of this, is it's like a bus. So there's new people getting on all the time. And that, that lovely family there have just got on today. So we've just met today. So there's a constant stream of loads of people always getting on and off the ship, which I think is quite cool. I like that. 
We are in Barcelona, where Manuel comes from, off Faulty Towers. What else do I know about Barcelona? Well, it's a fabulous song by Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Caballé. It's the capital of Catalonia, and it's got a very famous football team. But apparently, there's one must-see thing here, and I'm on my way now. The Sagrada Familia. Apparently, the Sagrada Familia is Antonio Gaudi's greatest and most famous creation. He was quite eccentric, you don't say. <laughs> yeah, there's like loads of fruit. Raspberries, bananas. Work began on this in 1882 and is expected to finish in 2041. That's all of a contract, isn't it? That is real passion there because of the, the hand behind the head, which means so much more. Do you know what that is, that couple? Um, they're, uh, it's the, it represents the kiss of Judas. The ki oh, the kiss of Judas. I thought that was pure passion. Well, the whole thing is, is passion. passion. Yes, the whole facade is called passion facade. Wow. So. Thank you so much You're for your welcome. help. I really appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. Oh, God, wow! I get really... I get really emotional with things like this. It's... This has completely taken my breath away. <laughs> completely again. Everybody's going to think I'm soft. Overwhelmed. I didn't. I didn't expect to feel overwhelmed. So every single part of it is meticulous. You just feel the energy coming through. Going from the reds and the beautiful golds here, straight over here to the blues and the greens. It, it's breathtaking. Do yourself a favour and, and just come and stand in this place if you get a chance. It'll take your breath away like it's done mine. After all the emotion of the Sagrada Familia, I need to unwind a little. for a, a bar crawl on a stick and I'm off. Oh wow, look at this at night. I'm starting at the top of the ship and planning to drink my way across and down. A bit like doing a crossword. Right, yes, madam. Could I have a pina colada, please? Cheers. Do I do it? <laughs> Ooh. Oh my, that's got a kick. Hitting all these bars is a fab way to meet some other guests. Hello. Hola. Uh -huh. That's for me. Oh, yeah. Thank you very, very yeah, much. Man. Two down, only 18 more to go. It's really exciting, isn't it? I love being on cruises. I just love it. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm a big, big fan. Yeah. There you go. Thanks very much. Really lovely to meet you. You too. You're an actress. Yeah, well, I won't go that far. OK, OK. <laughs> I'm having a brilliant time. To be honest, I've lost count of the number of bars I've been to. Oh, I love this. But I've given it a proper go. And once I start dancing, I'm going to dance till I drop. See ya! Day off. I can do what I like. I'm in Marseille. 
and I'm having a lovely... It's a beautiful day, so I'm just going to go and have a little wander. Marseille is the oldest city in France, founded about 600 BC. Definitely older than Wakefield. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like an ice cream? <laughs> Je voudrais un... Uh, your speciality, Noir. Black vanilla? Please, yeah. What makes it black? It's a salty vanilla. Salty vanilla? Yeah, but that, that's a secret. We don't tell the recipe. I see. Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. I would like to know what the special ingredient is, though, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Have I got a black tongue? No, it looks fine. Can we go down here? off the ship and walked into a musical. Welcome to Marseille. Hi. What's this? Why are all these people at railings? Hi. Bonjour. You look like you know what you're doing. Oh, thank you. What what is this? Yeah. The Tour de France. Yeah. Tour de France? Yeah. Even I know the Tour de France is a bike race. Not just any bike race though. French blokes are obsessed by three things: wine, cheese, and the Tour de France. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I can't believe that! We just turned up at the Tour de France. Should encourage every race, races. You know? Okay. Yeah, in order to give her energy. Energy. Yeah. Pass your energy on. Yeah. Hey! hey! Woo! Thank you. Let's your name? Start. Frederick. Frederick. Hello. Je m'appelle Jane. Hello. N nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Woo! I'm here, giving my encouragement with Frederick. See, I've even got the French way now. Merci. Thank you, bye. We didn't expect this at all, did we? We just came out to have a look around Marseille off the ship. And I think I've had the best day ever. And that's because I'm on a cruise around this beautiful part of the world. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if I hadn't got on this cruise. Marvellous as Marseille was, we're now heading to Genoa, which will allow me to visit somewhere I have always dreamed of. I'm excited because I'm going to Portofino, and Portofino is fabulous, apparently. And I've never been to Portofino, but I've heard such lovely things about Portofino. Have I mentioned I'm going to Portofino? Well, it's one of this cruiser's excursions, so I've booked myself on it. Portofino means Bay of Dolphins and is the jewel of the Italian Riviera. Once a humble fishing village, since the 1950s, it has been a magnet for celebrities. Everyone from Princess Grace to Elizabeth Taylor to the Kardashians have been here. This is probably one of the most beautiful places I'll ever visit. If there's one excursion you've got to do on this cruise, it's this one, because it's just stunning. It looks like a movie set. Just think what it must be like, owning that house up there. Delfino's is one of the most famous restaurants in the world. Do you know that? Where Elton John's sat. How far is that? 
Look, they've even got red carpet out for us all. These, I thought, would work today, but they're pumps and they're really painful because I've got all the cobbles out. See what I mean? There's only one thing for it. I'll have to buy some different shoes. Plenty of wedge on there so the cobbles won't get me. And a bit of a wide fit to accommodate me bunions. <laughs> Italy is the home of Gucci, Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, so really any excuse. Huh? It's possible to try it too. So can I try both? Sure. I do look a bit like Frankenstein in these, don't I? They're very nice, but I think they're more for someone with very dainty feet. How much? How this is yeah. uh, then 210. 210? All for Italy, Ah, yeah? uh, I know. <laughs> you cannot um, put a price on comfort. Sure. Mm. The Absolutely. people when she come, it is no sale. Uh -huh. No matter. The sale is the quality. It is. This shop. This is my father. Really? Happy. Yeah. This was your father's shop? Yes, yes. Oh, my wow. My mother, my father. Ma and you lived here all your life? All day. You wouldn't want to live anywhere else, would you? Uh, no, I think no. My son, she me, no, made in Puerto in the winter is too. Oh, for me, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere else. Yes. I would love to live here. These are lovely. I think I've found my dream pair of shoes. <laughs> and thank you for saving my life. <laughs> thank you, you. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye, bye. Beautiful place. It's classy. It's romantic. It's Italy. See, a cruise is like a little tasting menu of all these places that you can visit. I've just fallen in love with Portofino, where I will return and bring my partner here and have a beautiful romantic time. I'm going to sit right there in the sunshine and watch the world go by with a cup of coffee. Can you lend me some euros? Because I've just spent all night. <laughs> we'll get your coffee. Take a seat. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to heaven on earth. Good morning, Naples. Now, this should be the end of my cruise, but over there is Capri, and I've just found out that they do a trip to Capri. I've always wanted to go to Capri to see Gracie Fields' house, really, and uh, I fancy doing it. Gracie Fields was one of the biggest stars in the world in the 1930s, basically the Adele of her day. She was born above a chip shop in Rochdale, and I grew up listening to her extraordinary voice. This, without a doubt, is the icing on the cake to this cruise. I'm on a pilgrimage. Yes! Let's see how crazy. I'm on a cruise around the Western Mediterranean. And I've been to all sorts of wonderful places, but I've come to my final port of call. I've always wanted to go to Capri to see Gracie Fields' house, really. Gracie fell out of favour with the British public during the Second World War. She'd fallen in love with and married Monty Banks, who, despite his very English name, was an Italian citizen. If they had stayed in the UK, he would have been interned. So they went to the US and Gracie raised millions for the war effort, entertaining troops. After the war, she received a thank you letter from Churchill, who'd encouraged her to go to America. This is Capri. 
I'm here in Capri after all these years. The public never forgave her for abandoning Britain in its hour of need, so she left the UK and made her home here on Capri. Isn't it pretty? Oh, look at this place. I didn't expect this. I don't know what I expected in Capri, but it wasn't this. To get the most out of my visit, I've enlisted the help of Seb Lissandro, a major Gracie fan. He's going to show me around. Hello. Hey, hi. Welcome to Capri. Oh, so how come you're, you're the keeper of the flame? Well, I kind of fell upon that. I, I first heard Grace when I was at high school on a, a compilation CD. I thought, the lady singing Ave Maria and singing as we go, it can't be the same voice. Yeah. I looked into it and found out that, well, she's from Rochdale, 11 miles away from where I live. I thought, well, an interesting life story. And it just kind of spiralled uncontrollably from there, really. She fell in love with this place, though. Well, in her book, she says, with her marriage broken down completely to her first husband, she said that she felt a failure, so she gave up the idea of falling in love with someone, and she fell in love with somewhere. Gracie said that I belonged in Capri, which is why she's buried here. Gracie was responsible for putting Capri on the map. Her fame attracted the celebrities of her day to the club and restaurant she built here. Marilyn Monroe came here. Greta Garbo came here, Richard Burton and the tale of their affair broke while they were here. That's all because of Grace and Fiona. And that's all because she set up this Amazing club place. right here. Yeah. yeah. So this was the place that she fell in love with, this bit here? This is the Marina Piccola, and this is where Gracie first came around the corner in a horse and cart and said, that's it. She saw this before it was modernised as it is today, a little fishing village, um, and she fell in love with the place. And she knew then that I want to live in Capri. And this is where she set up home and set up her restaurant. Two of the things that she hated about Capri was fish and chips were terrible, um, and she couldn't get bacon. <laughs> well, that's too, because you can't. So, really. what, speaking of cruise ships, what she would do is, um, when a cruise ship would come into the harbour like that, she'd send one of her restaurant staff over in a little dinghy and say, Look, Grace will come and do a song for you if he goes a leg of bacon. <laughs> they, would, they would do it. Like, literally singing for a supper. Literally singing for a supper. Listen, when you're gagging for a bacon sandwich, that's the only way to do it. And that's what she did. <laughs> Love her. <laughs> right. This is where Gracie lived. This was the gates to her house. And we can walk along the driveway here. So um, she would have the restaurant down there, and every morning at 11 o'clock, she'd go down from the main house down there to sing to the fans that come to visit her from Rochdale or around England. And she'd let them have five minutes with every person that came to see her. So she'd sign autographs, she'd sing a song if they wanted it, and she would just be our Gracie. Who owns this now? This is owned by um, the Swarovski Crystal family. Swarovski? Yeah. So they, so they bought this. Um, that's where Gracie used to live. Oh, Gracie, aren't you done well, girl? I'm shocked at how little everybody knows about Gracie Fields, especially here, when she, she built all this. Yeah. Nothing, nothing here to say this was all built by Gracie Fields. That's quite sad, isn't it? Gracie died in September 1979, mm -hmm. um, and the waiters from her restaurant carried the coffin here. That's where she's buried. Oh. Oh. Oh, bless. Bless her. Grace has been woven in and out of my life for quite some time, and to actually be here and pay my respects. I feel very close to her right now. What a trip this has been. 5,000 people on a ship this big, 
touring round Italy, Malta, Spain and France. This is a cruise that really comes together with old and new. It's been a blast and I probably will need to lie down in a darkened room for two days to get over the parties, but it's been amazing. girl went back to Napoli because she missed the scenery the native dances and the charming songs but wait a minute something's wrong Crazy, do the mambo like a crazy with a hey mambo. Don't want a tarantella, hey mambo. No more mozzarella, hey mambo. Mambo italiano, try an enchilada with a fishy bacala and a hey. Delicious, everybody come capish how to mambo Time a seven day sail round the Mediterranean. Taking in a ravishing room. Oh my gosh, the Colosseum! That is a wow moment, isn't yeah. it? Picturesque Pisa. Guide me, guide me. Money bags Monte Carlo. Something like that you can always dream of, can't you? And somewhere sure to make a girl blush. Welcome to Florence. This promises to be a week in foodie heaven, from classic French. Beautiful. Oh, look wow. at that. That's to the most authentic Spanish. That is just dancing across my tongue. It's the med like you've never seen it before. Yay! No wonder we're all so excited. Yay! Buongiorno and welcome to Rome, one of the world's most breathtaking cities. It's beautiful, it's noisy, it's passionate, it's vibrant. It's la dolce vita which is the good life, sweet life. And getting here is really easy. I flew in from Manchester, but there are direct flights from most UK airports. It'll only take around three hours, but once you arrive, you'll feel like you're in a different world. Sadly, my Roman holiday will be a short one, as I'm due on my ship at lunchtime. It's late spring, but even the early morning heat can be unbearable. So I've passed up all the walking tours on offer and booked myself a car tour instead. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Are you Alessandra? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm Jane. Nice to Very meet you. Very nice to meet you. Oh, hello. Oh, the welcome, welcome is lovely. You. Thank you. Zipping round on four wheels means I'll get to see more of the top sights. I'm all for a bit of quantity over quality. In. Oh, you're folding. Now, if you've ever driven in Rome, you'll know the roads can be a bit hairy. But that's OK, cos Alessandro's got the wheel. And the horn. This gorgeous old Fiat 500 is just one of many cars you can choose from. But remember, the more exclusive, the more expensive. So I can't believe that this car is 53 years old. 53 and still, uh, still working. Yeah? The girls like the Fiat more than the big cars. Do they really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they like the girl. Oh, it's a bit of a babe magnet, this then. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know what I said about the roads being hairy? Uh... Oh! <laughs> the driving is very frenetic over here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Italian driving is. Uh... The road is, uh, is a jungle. 
With a local behind the wheel, you not only save on stress and time, you have a lot more fun. And that wind in your hair doesn't half help you cool down. So this is St. Peter's here? Yeah, this is St. Peter's. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? From there, from the square, is not true. Start the Vatican, uh, uh -huh. the Vatican State. At just 100 acres, the Vatican is the world's smallest country. But it has to be one of the most stunning. As well as being home to the Pope, it's packed with priceless artworks, like Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. I always associate Michelangelo with painting, but actually it's architecture. Yeah, yeah, he did also the, the architecture of yeah. the, the, the dome and the, the park. Alessandro's driving to the highest point to show me someone with a familiar name. This is Garibaldi. Yeah, Garibaldi. Good biscuits. It's, yeah, it's not a biscuit because no. all the English said that. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like the national hero really? that made the unification of the country. <laughs> this is the Fontana oh, Paola. Look. Oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, wow. From this 400-year-old fountain, you get unrivaled views of the city. I can see why you you do tours of this, though, because it's a passion, isn't it? For me, I don't feel like working no. when I'm like in the office, you know? With other tourists, we stop in a bar, sometimes at the ice cream or oh. a glass of wine. Yeah. Now he's talking. <laughs> oh, blimey. So I'm getting a feel for real Italy here. Alessandro's going to take me to a typical local bar, but I'm only going to have a coffee because it's very early in the morning, even for me. So this is a weak macchiato. A weak macchiato, yeah. That's weak. Yeah, that is weak. Never ask a big coffee like uh, dirty water. <laughs> If I drink this, I won't be able to blink for three days. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, my God, that is strong. How do you drink that? And we drink, like, uh, four or five every day. You drink four or five of these? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a wimp where coffee's concerned. <laughs> Still, that caffeine hits brought out the Roman in me. It's amazing what you can remember from a pocket translation book. Non capisco italiano perché sono inglese. <laughs> Is that good? It's very good. It's very good. <laughs> Which means I don't speak Italian because I'm English. Because I'm English, yeah. <laughs> and vorrei se Franco Bolli di Cinquecento, per favore. Vorrei, yeah, OK. Yeah, vorrei. Vorrei due yeah. Franco Bolli. Yeah. I need some stamps for England. <laughs> that is my... That's it. That's all I know. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> ah, warm sunshine and a hot, handsome and knowledgeable guide. What more could I want when in Rome? Well, seeing as you ask. Oh, my gosh, the Colosseum! Oh, wow. That is a wow moment, isn't yeah. it? Completed nearly 2,000 years ago, the Colosseum was Rome's equivalent of Wembley Stadium. Although the games they played there were a little bit more deadly. Russell Crowe used to strut his stuff in here too. Oh wait, that was a movie, wasn't it? So Jane, it was a really nice to meet you. Oh, it was nice to meet you too. I feel like I've been on a date. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. Thank you for a lovely trip. What a great end to a great morning. Only drawback, there's no time for a tour inside. But there's a good reason for that. And there it is, the Oceania Marina, waiting for me in Civita Vecchia, 40 minutes away. This is premium quality cruising, spread across 16 decks. And I'm just one of 1,200 guests boarding for seven whole days. I'm just going to go in to check in. Got my passport ready. I'm off. Good morning. Good morning. Please in before you go on board. Thank you very much. A lot of cruise lines do themed cruises now. And this one is all about cuisine. As well as an onboard cookery school, the ship also offers foodie excursions. 
I really quite fancy one of them. Hello. I'm really well. How are you? Thank you. Very nice to see you. Lovely to meet you. Oh, it looks like Lalique. Is that Lalique Crystal? Look at this. That's Lalique Crystal. This is not your cheek. Yeah, that's real. Wow. It's very, um, very Art Deco, isn't it? When you first board a ship this size, it takes a while to get your bearings. Deck 11. I've done this before, you know. <laughs> well, that can't we? I got lost before as well. Uh, let's have a look. Ah, what are you? Let's have a look. <gasps> oh, come in here. I love this bit. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> it was fab. Oh, look, balcony, look, balcony. Champagne, that's always handy. Because you never know what you're going to invite in, do you? Fabulous walking... Oh, shoes! I've not seen that before. You've got shoe, shoe uh, rails there. Oh, look at this! Oh, my gosh, this is really grand. A bath is something that you don't often get on a cruise ship. So you, it's a very, a very luxurious thing to have in your cabin. And if you're going to have a posh bath, you might as well have posh toiletries. Oh, what's these? Bath salts. Got these bath salts? Dead sea salt contains ten times more minerals than ordinary sea salt. So you don't want to put this on your chips. You actually put it in your bath. Right, with a hectic week ahead. We'll be cruising along the northern Mediterranean Riviera. First stops Livorno, from where we'll pop into Pisa and Florence. We'll race down to Monte Carlo, then Toulon, before visiting Barcelona. Next, there's Cartagena, before we end our Mediterranean meanderings in Malaga. Now that were a mouthful. OK, it's 6 p.m. and it's sail away. I've lost count on how many I've been on, but this one's definitely designed to put you in the holiday mood. A band with great tunes and passengers with great moves. Should I join in? Oh, go on then. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, love. Well, you know what they say, when in Rome. It's day two of my cruise along the Med, on board the Oceania Marina. We've left Rome and sailed 150 miles north to Livorno. Morning. I'm up early for a day trip to Florence and Pisa. Sadly, not the best weather-wise, but we shall not be beaten. It's absolutely throwing it down. It don't matter. We're on as holidays. I've got a brolly. I've got a coat. I've got my vest on. And we're off on a bus. Buongiorno. Oh. It's raining, man. It is. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry, darling. Nice to meet you, Julia. too. Julia. Nice to meet you, Julia. <sighs> Livorno's the closest port to the sites, but it's still a three-hour round trip. Morning. But who cares? We can keep dry and listen to the soothing tones of our tour guide. So, how are you today? Everything OK? Ready for Florence? Yes. yes? Florence is my hometown. I was born in Florence. I grew up there, so I know the town like the back of my hand. And what a town, or city to be exact, it is. Established by the wealthy Medici family, it became a powerhouse of art and culture in the Middle Ages. The ancient streets are so atmospheric, no wonder they attract the crowds. And the statues, well... Welcome to Florence. I mean, they've erected them all over the place. Sometimes you just don't know where to look. Have you ever seen a man look like that? Fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every muscle. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? This magnificent specimen is a copy of Michelangelo's David. If you want to see the real one, head to the city's Galleria dell'Accademia. 
It's £15 to get in and you'll need to book in advance as tickets sell out fast. Have another wow. You like the wow, eh? Come with me. Great thing about having a local guide? You learn loads and don't waste a minute. Julia's taken us on a shortcut to another jewel in the city's crown. They put the first stone in 1296 uh, and they finish in 1436. It's quite interesting, actually, listening to her, isn't it? Yeah, because... Oh, she's great. It's good, she's full of great. The Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral dominates the Florence skyline. It's got the largest masonry dome in the world, with more than four million bricks. Just as spectacular as the colourful marble exterior. This looks absolutely stunning in the sunshine. But you know what? It looks absolutely stunning in the pouring rain as well. It is a masterpiece, isn't it? Florence really is a feast for the eyes and well worth the journey. But all too soon, our visit's over. We're heading back to the bus for the next stop on our excursion, 60 miles west. Pisa sits on the Arno River with historic bridges, churches and medieval palaces. But let's be honest, most tourists, and that includes me, come here to see only one site. It's really on account, that. It really does lean. Back in the 12th century, the Pisonians, try saying that when you've had a few, built the Square of Miracles, housing a cathedral with a freestanding bell tower. Miracle is it still standing, if you ask me. It says here on the interweb that the slant of the tower started while they were building it. So I'm not one to cause trouble, but why didn't they just stop? and think, hang on, we've done something wrong here. But no, they carried on. <laughs> they carried on building it, and, uh, and, the, and the lean happened because the ground is too soft. By the mid-90s, the lean was five degrees, and the tower was close to collapse. British scientists and Italian engineers then took 10 years and 30 million euros fixing it. So let me have a look on my handy app now and see how much it is now. It's now 3.97 degrees. The leaning tower's just over 180 feet high, and you can climb the 300 steps to the top. Personally, I'd rather keep my feet on the ground. It's a force of nature, because you think it's going to fall down, and it doesn't. We hope. But it's really spectacular. Everywhere you look, someone's doing that classic holding up the tower thing for their holiday snaps. Well, if you can't beat them. You couldn't take this photograph of me like this, pushing the tower up, could yeah, you? Yeah. Will you? Right, you. that's me. That's my phone. Okay. All right. Oh, get rid of the case there. Okay. So guide me. What's your name? Sorry. Catherine. Catherine and Alec. Alec. Right, Catherine and Alec. Can I just get? Is it just guide me? Guide me. Up a bit. Up a bit. Up. Up. And. And. Oh, oh. No, back. 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 Up. Oh. Just a bit, yeah? That's all right. Didn't that set? Hey. I think that one. Oh, bless you! <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it's yeah. great. That's absolutely brilliant. Give us a hug on that. Oh, really lovely to meet, to meet you both. You Have a lovely much. holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. <laughs> that certainly wouldn't have had as much attention if it was straight. Let's be honest. I think sometimes the best, biggest mistakes can turn out to be the most perfect thing. It's a perfect imperfection. After a full day's sightseeing, it's good to get back on board. The marina's noted for its food, but you can't spend all day stuffing your face, much as I'd like to. So while we set sail west, I'm choosing culture over kitchen and joining the art classes. Always one of my favourite cruising activities. Hi, I'm Jane. Hello, and I'm Jean. Hello, Jean, how are you? So, what have we got to paint then? It's going to be the David. You can emphasise whatever bit you want. Oh, OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Might not even get down to that bit. There is no right or wrong to this. Everybody's going to do something different. Our teacher is the ship's artist in residence, Jerry. I think that's brilliant. 
I think I'm not. <laughs> Yours is fabulous. Yours is a lot more dynamic, isn't it? Yours looks like a man. Mine looks... On skates? Yeah, mine looks like a waiter on a surfboard. On a Sorry. It's all over me trousers! Well, despite me wardrobe disaster, I don't think I've done too badly. But then it's not my opinion that counts, is it? Look how nicely the the reds and the yellows are blended together. Oh, bless you, Jerry. If the voice ever packs up, I might have found a new way of making a living. OK, we bid Buena Sera to Italy, and after heading 225 miles along the coast, we're saying bonjour to Monaco, whose port's name is synonymous with glamour. There are various guided tours you can sign up for, but it's only a small place and I fancy a bit of an adventure, so I've decided to go it alone. Hello, hello, Monte Carlo. We're here in the land of the rich and famous. The streets aren't exactly paved with gold, but property per square foot is four times more expensive than central London, and nearly a third of the people are millionaires. Something like that you can only sort of dream of, can't, can't you? I mean, a cruise, we can all, you know, if we really save up hard, we can, we can afford it. But it brings us to places like this where, you know, this is just dreamland. Hello, I'm Jane McDonald. Hi, Jane, how are you doing? Talking of dreamboats, meet Martin. I'm the second officer on here. Oh, wow. Uh, so we've got just under 50 employed crew in total. Because it's not just the buying of it, is it? It's the, it's the maintaining it. Yeah, the maintenance. They say roughly, in, in the yachting industry, the maintenance for a yacht is roughly 10% of the buying cost of it a year. So you're looking at, I don't know, 20, 20 million a year or something to run. 20 million with, yeah, a year just to run it? and things like that, yeah. It's it, a different world, isn't it? It is, yeah, a completely yeah. different world. It's amazing to see how the 1% of the, the 1% live. That's yeah. Sure. Thank you so much and enjoy your time no, here. No, not a problem. Pleasure to meet you. And you and too. There are a lot of money out the yachts. I think that one's more, my, yeah, that one's more in my range, really. When the visiting super rich aren't on their super yachts, you'll find them in one of the exclusive hotels. This beautiful building is the Hotel Metropole. Oh, they even pushed the door for you. Hello, Hello Welcome there. Welcome to the Metropole Monte Carlo. Thank How you, are you very much. I'm very, very well. Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you, do you need to take... It's a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thanks, cos I don't want to get the floor wet. That's perfect. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Jane. Hello. How are you? So nice to meet nice you. To Welcome meet you to the Metropole. Staying here's definitely out of my price range, but I've been a bit cheeky and asked for a tour, and Lauren, one of their lovely staff, had kindly agreed. See? Don't ask, don't get. I'll show you in the Suite Carridor. Oh, fabulous. And we're going to go to see the view, because that's the real advantage of the suite is the beautiful view you have of the casino and the opera. Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh, it's amazing. Now, this is a sea view. In high season, this one-bedroom suite will cost you over £8,000 a night. <laughs> I mean, this is beyond... It's just fantastic, yeah. isn't it? I'm a bit taken aback, actually. I'm a bit taken aback, but this is just... Can I go no, out here? I'll just open it. No, oh, this is gorgeous. <gasps> oh, wow. You can just imagine sat here with your champagne, obviously on ice, chilled to perfection. Take the whole world in. You just feel like you're on top of the world here. It's... It's a different... It's just a different... different world. As we're moored in port for the day, there's plenty of time to explore. I did fancy a walk around the legendary casino, but the James Bonds of this world value their privacy too much. But never mind. The place I really want to see is right out in the open. Wow. The Cathedral of Our Lady Immaculate stands on the site of the original parish church of Monaco, dating back nearly 800 years but it was a 20th century wedding that put it on the world's front pages. This is a very, very special cathedral, because this, of course, is where Grace Kelly married her prince, the Prince of Monaco, and then she became the Princess of Monaco. 
Grace was one of the biggest Hollywood stars of her time, an Oscar winner who epitomized on-screen beauty and elegance. She met Prince Rainier at the Cannes Film Festival in 1955 and married him a year later. <sighs> the guest list. 700 guests were in, uh, invited to this amazing wedding. Cary Grant, David Niven, Gloria Swanson, Ava Gardner. Ooh, that's just like the who's who of Hollywood, really, isn't it? You can just imagine all those years ago, Prince of Monaco with his new bride, the beautiful Grace Kelly. Monte Carlo, what a glorious place. I've only spent a day here, but I've really seen how the other half live. I think I could get used to it. That's a push. Not now, though, as I've got to get on. The Med's most delicious delights await. That is just dancing across my tongue. Way through my Mediterranean Riviera cruise. We left glitzy and glammy Monaco yesterday and sailed just over a hundred miles south to our next port of call. Out into the beautiful day that we have. That is Toulon in France. Now I don't want to sound lazy or anything, but all that walking around fabulous Monte Carlo really took it out of me. So today I'm staying firmly on board. That's the great thing about a cruise. You can just please yourself. I'm sure it's lovely out there, but it's lovely on here as well. And it looks like a lot of my fellow passengers have had the same idea. Oh, hello. Are you all right? Can I sit? Have you done any of the restaurants on here yet? We've done a shack. What did you think? Lovely. Was it fabulous? Any recommendations that I should have? Yes. What? Dovesol. Dovesol. <gasps> like Dovesol? I love Dovesol. It's always good to get some pointers about where to eat, especially on a ship with a choice of nine restaurants. Personally, I also like to have a bit of a nosy round before deciding. Look at this. I mean, how beautifully set out it all is. And these plates are Versace. The attention to detail on here is, is quite something, but it's not stuffy in any way. It's very homely. So this is the grand dining room. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a chandelier. I'm guessing this dishy chef must be Jacques. This is the big posh one. <laughs> and it's Paul, not posh. <laughs> oh, gosh, look at this. I mean, it just feels, it feels special. I'm going to eat in here tonight. All meals are included in the cruise, even in the speciality restaurants, but you do have to book them. And to be sure of a table, do it online before you board. A little tip, if you're a solo traveller, you've got more chance of getting into a restaurant than anybody, because they can fit a solo traveller onto somebody else's table quite easily. Which is also a great way of getting to know people and making new friends. If you fancy a day on board, you could relax by the pool or have a treatment at the spa. But all that snooping round the restaurants has made me hungry. So I've booked myself into a cookery class. I'm going to learn how to cook crepe Suzette today. It's one of my favourite dishes. My partner is fellow passenger Ollie. <laughs> what do we do? How are you, Ollie? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm really good. Lots of cruisers have kitchen demos, but the marina was one of the first to have a full-blown cookery school at sea. Good afternoon. My name is Chef Carlos Selms, and I'll be your chef instructor today. The classes are hosted by top chefs, all providing step-by-step -step guidance. First rule is this. Everybody breathe, relax, chill out, smile. We're here to learn, cook, have a good time. Chef Carlis starts by showing us how to make the perfect crepe. I'm going to fold this into half and fold that into a quarter. Oh, it's the boozy orange sauce. <gasps> My mouth's watering. And voila. Yeah. Our 
our turn now. And as the batter's been made for us, it should be easy. Oh, that's steaming now. That's good. So we can see the edges there? Is it wanting to separate for me? Well, I did say should be easy. Oh, so it's so well, Chef. <laughs> Let's give it another go. There you go. Fill it in. Fill it in. Beautiful. Oh, look wow. at that. That's... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We're back on track. Just need to make the sauce now and we'll be on to a winner. I'll be your sous chef. OK. So, straight in. Straight in. Yeah. Ooh, it's smoking. Smoking. Mix it around a bit. Let it go. Yeah. Shape yeah. Around. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Good. Use the spatula as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this is like... Yeah. OK. <laughs> really and weird. hit and with the booze. OK. Come yeah, around. Moving, <laughs> Get the booze. <laughs> Now squeeze the orange squeeze and drop the them. Orange. Squeeze one and drop. drop. It in, babe. Now in with the crepes and give them a little bubble bath and they're good. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So we've got that one. Wow. It's a quick sauce, right? It's a pan sauce, so we don't need to cook it. Like a natural. Really oh, nice. <laughs> Looks really good. Ed, I'm not a natural. <laughs> it may look good, but the proof of the pudding. Mm. Not bad, eh? Good. Well, you know what? They call these crepe, but I think they're all right. It was very nicely done. Thank you very much. A lot of fun. As we leave the French Riviera behind, it's time to let the professionals take over in the kitchen. And I'm off to Jacques to meet a few new cruise friends. Hello. 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 Good evening. Hello, Hello lovely people. Good How good are we? All the French classics are here, from Coco Vam to Creme Brulee. This is some menu. But as we're surrounded by sea, I know what I fancy. Could I have the, uh, that one? Yeah, the sea bass. Yeah. That looks good. That is so good, isn't it? It got you a few bobby white fill, wouldn't it? What's that? So I've noticed a little bit of local lingo banter here. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. When northerners get together, it's a different language. <laughs> Ah, good food, great company, and the magnificent Mediterranean. What a perfect end to my day on board. Thank you so much for such a great night. That's so nice to meet you all. Bless you. Cheers. Cheers. Right, we've done Italy and Monaco and France. During the night, we've headed west to Spain and the capital of its Catalan region, Barcelona. founded it at the end of the first century. Today it's renowned for its architecture, its love of football and passion for food. So I'm seeing what's cooking by joining an excursion led by the crepes of that king himself, Chef Carlis. Have you done a food tour here before? Never. Never? Okay, Never done a food go. tour, so well, this is exciting. So are you squeamish? Is there something you don't like to eat? Uh, snails, I'm not great on. Great, we'll get you some snails. No, 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 no. <laughs> Me and my cruising Palanita are rambling down Las Ramblas, Barcelona's most famous street. It stretches nearly half a mile and includes one of Europe's biggest food markets, La Boqueria. I'm going to take you guys and show you some of the local goodies. We're oh, good. great. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, Vamanos. Fabulous. When it started around 700 years ago, peasants would come from nearby towns and villages to sell their produce. You can still buy loads of local delicacies today, like this Pimento de la Vera Spice Blend. What would you exactly use this for then? So it, it's typically, okay, you'll find it used in paella, okay, but you can use it in a lot of other bases, for like a base of a soup in the marinades or onto dry rubs. Oh, so Spring. you can do it on a steak? Yeah, you can do it on a steak. You can even put it onto fish if you wanted to, right? So a little bit of that. Or you could even make an aioli, which is a typical uh, dish oh, here, yeah. where you take the garlic, the garlic, extra virgin olive oil, grind it together, the egg yolk, you could dip fries in there. You can do whatever the heck you want. Oh, I said so, that. The world's yours. Sold on that one. Good, good. So I'll take one of those. Okay. Thank you. Isn't it great having a chef with you? <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. It means we get to see and taste everything. We got you some bacalao. It's, it's salt cod. Okay, right. they take the salt cod, they soak it, and then they mix it with potatoes okay. and herbs, and they make it in these beautiful little balls, and they fry it, 
Cheers. And we sprinkle just a little bit of lemon on there. Right. And so you can make these bacalao and you can make your aioli with your mm. new pimenton de la vera and you oh, can dip that in these. Oh, that's got me in the mood for lunch, which is handy, as La Boqueria also has some of the best tapas bars in Spain. Now I've Googled this place and it's called Quim de la Boqueria. And it's a fellow called Quim who has his own stall and he buys everything from the local market here and cooks it for you. We're in search of Quim. Where is he? There we are. Hello, I'm nice Jane. To nice to meet you Hi, too. I'm Kim. 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 Ah, sorry, I've been calling you a different name. No, no, no. no. So no it's problem. Kim. Yes. His name's not Quim. It's Kim. <laughs> OK, moving on. In centuries gone by, drinkers would use a cover or tapa to keep the flies out of the wine glasses. Hmm, attractive. Innkeepers started serving bite-sized snacks on top of the tapa, probably to save on the washing up. And that, my friends, is how tapas was born. OK, the Ooh. first tapa. Yeah. Sprouts, creams with garlic. With and garlic. cava reduction. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. How do they make it taste like that? That is just dancing across my tongue. When in Spain, forget the sausage and chips. Have a go at the traditional tapas. This is the speciality uh, of the house. Right. The fried egg with uh, baby squid. Right. I recommend everything mixed. Mix it all up. Wow. That is really good as well. Oh. OK, the last tapa. OK, what is this? This is oxtail risotto. Oh, I love that sticky look. Oh, oh my God. Spanish paella. I absolutely love risotto. It's one of my favourite things. But I don't think I've ever tasted one as good as that. It's amazing, really, that I've come to Barcelona. I'm in the middle of the market, in the middle of the day, to somewhere where I would never normally have come, and I've probably had the best meal, probably one of the top three best meals of my life. Cheers, Kim. OK, I think we can say I'm well and truly stuffed, but I still haven't had my fill of the med. So I can't wait to get to the Costa del Sol for the last leg of my trip up the King's Passage. It's quite spectacular. Yay! Whee! <laughs> After seven days in the Med, I've travelled 600 miles and taken in four countries. After a brief stop at Cartagena yesterday, we finally arrived in Malaga on Spain's Costa del Sol. Which is where I have to get off. What a shame. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm Good checking afternoon. out. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Never mind though. My plane doesn't leave till tonight, so I've got another full day to myself. That could mean exploring anything from castles to beaches, or this thing looks like a giant Rubik's Cube. But instead, I'm heading into the Andalusian countryside. I'm going to burn off all that food I've been eating and hike Caminito del Rey, or the King's Passage. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marcelo. Marcelo, great to see you. Shall I get on? Yes, please. Thank you. Good morning. Marcelo's my guide for the trip, which is one of many you can book online. Prices start from around £20. This one includes the hour bus ride from Malaga itself. I did go on a hike once. It wasn't even a hike, it was a walk. And I walked with a rambling team round Wakefield. And uh, I dropped my phone and I had to go back and do the whole thing again to find my phone. And I ended up doing 10 miles and I got two ingrowing toenails from that. <laughs> right, some good news. Jerry, my art teacher from the ship, has also booked along with her husband, Mark. 
I'm so glad you're seeing it with me today. Just look at the reflections. I know. That's what you'll paint in watercolor. I'm going to be a right artist. I can feel it coming That's on. That's right. You have to show me your work. Email me. <laughs> This walk's nearly five miles long and takes roughly four hours to complete. So take sensible shoes, a bottle of water, and as there's no loose past the entrance, make sure you've been beforehand. Please, careful with those steps. Are very, yeah, very thin. Yeah, they're very thin, okay? aren't they? Yeah. Hang on. Ooh, these are a bit precarious. The walkway is only three feet wide, but over 300 feet high in some places. But if you do pluck up the courage, the rewards are worth it. The one thing that I'm really uh, enjoying is the air. You don't realise just how polluted everywhere is until you breathe fresh air. And it's just the most beautiful smell and it's gorgeous. It, you just feel as if this is doing you good because it is so pure up here. It's and the breath, I mean, it's just breathtaking. A lot of carbon, what is it? Carbon dioxide, isn't it? No? Oxygen. Okay, quick history lesson. They built the original walkway to transport material and workers between two power stations on either side of the ravine. When the stations were demolished, the workers left and it fell into disrepair. It finally closed to the public in 2000. You can see how precarious that was. In 2015, a new path opened, costing five and a half million euros. Worth it, because it's now a top tourist attraction. Gosh. Look at the vertical straights. I know, mountain. it's just like it's a straight, straight line. line. Exactly. But look at the depth. <laughs> at the centre of the ravine stands the suspension bridge linking the two mountains of the El Choro Gorge. 30 feet higher than Big Ben. Right, let's do this bridge then. Yes, here we go. OK. I can't believe something like this exists. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Word of advice, don't look down. Unbelievable, isn't it? It's just amazing to stand on this bridge like this in the middle of these Amazing mountains is quite spectacular. Yay! I actually did it. <laughs> I can't think of a more fitting end to an unforgettable adventure. What a trip! This has been amazing. I've been to all these places so many times. I've been to Italy, France, Spain, but the Mediterranean Riviera has been a trip of a lifetime. I've seen places that I never even knew existed. It's been phenomenal. And what's more, I've been able to brush up on my foreign languages. Don't forget, a stranger is just a friend you haven't made. No, a friend is <laughs> just a stranger you haven't made. Oh, fun.
Danes back cruising Scandinavia next Saturday at five past seven. How will William and Kate shape the future of the British monarchy? Are they too good to be true? Find out brand new at 9.15 tonight. First, revealing the secrets behind Van Gogh's sunflowers. Andrew Marr explores great paintings of the world. New next.